There have been talks of this particular fragrance being the best release of 2018 thus far. Today we're going to take a close look at the newest flanker from Prada's Luna Rosa lineup. Of course we're looking at Prada Luna Rosa Black. Stay right there, it's coming up right now. Welcome to the channel, my name is Max Forte. This is a channel where we discuss fragrances, smelling great and making a great first impression. If it's your first time, make yourself comfortable and enjoy the content. Today's video, of course, the newest release from Prada. This is Prada Luna Rosa Black, one that's been getting quite a bit of talk in the fragrance community. A lot of people saying that this is perhaps one of the best, if not the best release of 2018 thus far. Let's check this juice out. Let me tell you what I feel about this fragrance. It's quite good, but I don't know if I would tag it as the best of the year so far, but it's quite good. We'll get into it in a second. Now, before I get into the shoes, of course, let's talk about the sizes. Available in two main sizes, of course, 50 ml for $76, or the size we're looking at today, which is 100 ml for 96 USD. Prada Luna Rosa Black is, of course, the seventh flanker of the Luna Rosa you know, lineup, and of course, the second Eau de Parfum concentration, the first, of course, Prada Luna Rosa Extreme, which to this day happens to be my favorite from the whole Luna Rosa lineup. Let's see if this one here will dethrone this one, shall we? Prada Luna Rosa Black is classed as an oriental woody fragrance. The nose behind this fragrance is none other than the very talented in-house perfumer, Daniela Andrier. When you first spray on Prada Luna Rosa Black, as the name implies, it's going to be a darker scent. You're going to be greeted by this ambery, sharp, lavender, even though lavender is not listed here as a note, you get this sharp, lavender, rubbery, ambery, patchouli kind of a combo, a trifecta that is similar to fragrances like Bulgari Black, as we refer to as the, the hockey puck, which has been discontinued now. However, it's very similar to this fragrance, as well as another fragrance that I immediately thought of when I wore this fragrance, which is a great alternative if you missed this particular fragrance, which is Midnight in Paris from Van Cleef and Arpels. If you guys missed that EDP concentration for that particular fragrance, Midnight in Paris, this will be a great alternative. When you compare this one to the Extreme, which was, you know, the first Eau de Parfum from this lineup, which is now discontinued, the Extreme version happens to be my favorite because it's a little bit more uh, on the spicier side of things and it's uh, quite woody. So it has the scent profile that I normally gravitate towards. However, this is also very ambery. The patchouli here is really of the very sensual kind. The scent is very sensual, very exotic, really dark from what's out there from the designer spectrum of things that you find regularly. This one here is definitely a more daring take from all the different Luna Roses up to this point, for sure. This is going to be a more uh, seasoned or um, particular taste. Not everybody will love the scent, but I do believe the people that do enjoy this will absolutely love it. The easiest way to describe this one as far as the scent goes, if you are familiar with the Sport Luna Rosa, the red one, this here is that fragrance darkened up. They took that exact same profile and character and made it a little darker with the patchouli, the amber, and just gave this a darker, woodier, creamier uh, essence to this fragrance. So if you do enjoy Prada Luna Rosa Sport, I think you're gonna really love this one if you wanted something a little darker. If you have both, you can definitely rock Luna Rosa Sport for the summer and spring and definitely rock this one in the colder months of the year. If you are in a location that you actually get winters like we do here where I am in New York, you know, New England area. But definitely a great scent for, you know, fall. Definitely a great scent for, for, for winter. You can really rock this in springtime when it's really hot out. I would probably refrain from wearing this, uh, especially if you're wearing a lot of it. But if you go, you know, if you control your trigger, if you go two sprays, you can actually probably get away with it in a, in a, in a summertime as long as you don't spray your, your, your neck area here because it can get a little bit clawing because it is one of those, you know, darker, sharper, lavender, patchouli, amber. It's got some heavier notes in here that can get a little bit too much, but it's done very nice, very smooth. It's not overbearing or extremely uh, a pungent. It's one of those scents that is dark, but also controlled and, and you know, quote unquote, mass appealing. You do get a vanilla kind of nuance here. There's definitely a resinous, maybe benzoin going on, as well as uh, a note of angelica, which, which will give the scent a semi-herbal undertone as well. For a dark, heavier scent, the performance was not unbelievably good, but it was actually quite good. I got six to seven hours with the scent, spraying my clothes, which, which is actually a day's work. Anything that gives me above six for work, I actually enjoy. Probably will rock this when, when the winter rolls around as one of my rotation work scents. I, I do enjoy it. I think it's definitely more of the 
address your variety uh, as far as projection. It pushes really well for the first hour and a half, two hours, then it gets really close to the skin. But like I said, six to seven hours is what you get for longevity. Siage, this will give you an amazing siage which will last throughout the whole day. People will get whiffs as you walk around, as you move your arms, especially if you spray your arms and your, your uh, elbow crevice here. People will definitely get whiffs of this fragrance throughout the whole day. Definitely address your scent. I think this is more of a nocturnal scent as well. I think it's great for night out, especially if you're going on a date, romantic settings. I think this will be perfect. I think this is a more mature kind of scent, 20, 25 and up. I think someone really young, you know, not gonna really appreciate the scent, but if you have tried a lot of darker scents and you, you gravitate towards sweet, darker scents, this will be right up your alley. And I also think this has an androgynous kind of a character. I think a lady can pull this off, although it, it does, you know, lean towards masculine, but I, I can see a lady pulling this off quite beautifully as well. My final thoughts on uh, this newest release from Prada Luna Rosa lineup, you know, black. It's actually a very solid release, I quite enjoy. Uh, it is probably one of my favorites from the Lunarosis. Maybe I still like the extreme version a little bit better, although it is discontinued, but I, I'm a huge fan of Midnight in Paris, so this is a great alternative for that fragrance. And I love to see Prada doing a darker, more daring sense, you know, deviating from that, um, you know, sport, you know, soapy, cleaner kind of fragrance that they do so well. So this is like a, a great one, as well as the extreme was. I do love the, the, the sport uh, version as well. And I'm also a huge fan of the also discontinued Prada Amber Pour Homme Intense. If you can get that, it's got it's got a beautiful note of spicy patchouli in there. It's a little bit more old school and more uh, of mature variety on that uh, Prada, you know, Amber Pour Homme Intense. But it is a great dark scent as well. So Prada, again, really surprising me with this release because I'm used to more soapy, clean, freshy scents from them. This here. Thumbs up, really like it. Don't love it, but I really like it and I think it's really gonna grow on me as the weather gets colder. At this portion of the video, of course, I want you guys to let me know what your favorite Prada fragrances are. What are your three top faves from the brand? Please let me know down below. And of course, if you have gotten your noses on Prada Luna Rosa Black, what are your thoughts? Do you like, love it, hate it? Whatever the case may be, please share your thoughts below. Let's start a little Prada conversation. Please don't forget to share your support. It's greatly appreciated by yours truly. All you have to do is like, share, and subscribe, especially subscribing and hitting that like button. It's free and it helps the channel an awful lot. And also please don't forget to enable your notifications so you guys always get first dibs on new releases, fragrance reviews, giveaways, savings, anything and everything that happens fragrant related on the Informative Sense Facebook group, as well as Instagram, and of course, the YouTube channel. All the links will be down in the description below. That way you guys will always stay in tune and never miss a thing that happens in the fragrance world. And of course, in the meantime guys, stay fragrant, keep on spraying, and of course, it's not just what you spray, but also how you play. Guys, I'll catch you in the next one.